this is kind of interesting as well. This is from the Yard Barker. The hottest, three hottest seats um, for the Cleveland Browns coming up. Number one, they go to Sean Watson. That's, that's pretty obvious. 28-year-old um, has played just 12 games over the past two seasons, 14 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Watson will have zero excuses next season, especially after the addition of yet another uh, talented wide receiver, Jerry Judy. Elijah Moore, number 34 overall pick, 2021 draft, coming off yet another disappointing season in 2023. Had just 640 yards, receiving two touchdowns. Moore is headed into the final year of his rookie deal, means he must produce uh, his best season or he will be heading elsewhere in 2025. And the aforementioned Devin Bush, number 10 overall pick, 2019 draft, hasn't been the same since his rookie year when he had 109 tackles, one sack, one forced fumble, four fumble recoveries, two interceptions. Most have chalked up his decline in play to him tearing his ACL in the 2020 season, but he's several years removed from that injury now. Um, the Watson thing, he's got to play better. But part of that is he's got to stay on the field. You know, the, the one year it was suspension, when a guy's hurt, it's a physical game. <laughs> yeah. And that only adds to the pressure that he's facing, you know, is that he has missed time now with, through the suspension and then with injury. So there is a pressure, a pressure to stay on the field and a pressure to lead this team, you know, and that probably dismounted even more when he was hurt last year and watched a uh, near-retired quarterback come in and, and, and do his thing and kind of lead him on a run towards the end. So that all adds to the pressure. And he, there's no built-in excuses. There's no well, he didn't have what he needed to win or the offensive line was bad. And none of those exist. That People can paint those narratives, but they'll be false narratives. Everything's in place for him to be successful. So now that's up to him. The Elijah Moore one, though, I think that hasn't been talked about near enough because as soon as Judy got hired, everyone mentally went to, well, that means Coop won't be here past next year, which I see as false. I fully expect him to, to rework his deal, sign a small extension before the season. I think that's going to happen. But Elijah Moore, who was last year the guy who was brought in to kind of audition to be that number two, and it didn't go as planned, now there's pressure on him. And I'm excited for what he can do. I'm excited to see what he can do on the outside. He can really get loose on the third level. And I think that, that that's where his best attributes are. And I think he'll flourish in that. But he is going to see less opportunities just based on the numbers of bodies and you know someone like Judy coming in. So he's going to have to be more impactful with the touches that he does get. The Devin Bush one, I don't see pressure there. I think he's playing with house money. He went to the best possible situation. You look what he has in front of him, they're going to be able to keep him clean. Also, kind of like more, he's not going to have a ton of snaps, but he's going to have, to, he's going to have opportunities to be impactful. And if he's just able to do that, he's going to set himself up for a big contract. So I really don't see a, a hot seat situation for Devin Bush. Yeah, Moore and Bush, you would figure they will put them in. Their snaps may decline, but their ability to impact the game will improve because you're only going to, it's not like you're going to ask them to be out there and doing things they can't do. Um, Watson, they're putting everything around him. I think they're going to remake the offense to tailor it to him. So I'm with you. It, it, he needs to play better. He needs to play like the guy everybody believes he was when they went out and traded for him. Yeah, and, and that, I mean, you can say you don't hear the outside noise, but he, that, that's surrounding him. That, that's the news, and that's not just our perception who spend every day following the team. That's nationally. That's, everything's in place. You know, people wouldn't be calling this a top 10 roster you know, just if, if it was just based on Watson. That's without Watson. So he's stepping into that. And if he can't make that go, there's going to be doubt that he could make any team go.